the infamous work-life balance you know like i i feel like it's like this magical unicorn that just is kind of out there and like as parents we're supposed to try to like seek it out and find it welcome to the business of parenting podcast tune in as we discuss the principles of successful parenting as a business professional here's your host Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of BOP, the Business of Parenting podcast, where I get to talk about anything and everything I want to talk about when it comes to parenting with some amazing guests. And speaking of amazing guests, I have a very amazing guest with me today. I have the one, the only, Michelle Young. And Michelle, how are you doing today? I'm, so, I'm doing great. I don't know where I'm, I was going with that. I was just kind of like, oh, I'm just going to. Sometimes, you know, I, I have to fight. Like when I'm doing these intros, I have to fight. My inner McMahon doesn't come out. And I'm like, today, today, today. You know, and I'm like, I try not to do that. But it, like it sometimes comes out and I get a little giggle out of it. But hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> I like the inner McMahon. Yeah, you should okay. just talk like that all the time. Yeah. Just walk around. Um, hun, we need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> For milk. <laughs> We have fun on this podcast, but hey. Yeah, t- today you chose the Kroger milk. <laughs> you the Kroger milk, yes. Sorry. Well, Michelle, you got some cool topics uh, that we're going to get into. And um, I just, I, look, I love this this whole subject matter. You know, I'm like, like I said, before we started recording, I'm absolutely no expert. Um, if I am an expert, it's probably a better expert in making mistakes. But I've, 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 I've kind of... I've learned from my own mistakes and I try to learn from those mistakes quite quickly. And I think that's probably the key to running not only a successful business, but also running a successful business of parenting. So let's kind of get into it. Let's let's talk a little bit about you, Michelle. Let's let's talk a little bit about your business of parenting and then also your business as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, first of all, I'll start maybe with my my title because I've turned it into both a mixture of parenting title and work title. Uh, my title is chief marketing officer, but at home, I say that's the chief mommy officer. And I've done that pretty much since my kids were little. Um, so right now, from a work perspective, I'm the chief marketing officer of a company called Side. We are a real estate uh, brokerage platform. Uh, prior to Side, I was the CMO at Roadster. Most people in the automotive industry would, would know that and remember that. Um, but I also um, am writing a book on startups. Ooh. It comes out this spring called Grow Up, which is maybe actually kind of fitting. I could do a parenting version of that, <laughs> I suppose. Um, but it's all about startups and scaling businesses. Uh, and um, I also stay in the automotive space. I'm advising a few um, startups in that world as well. So lots of activity on the work front. Um, I have two teenagers at home, which is a crazy stage. <laughs> Um, of uh, kids to have in your household. Um, I have a a wonderful, um, very creative, very strong-willed daughter. Uh, She is 12 years old. And I have a son who just entered high school, which I'm still trying to like reconcile with myself that I have a high schooler. Um, And he is 14 and um, super smart loves everything technology, um, is also very emotional. So I had to think through how to be a parent of an emotional boy, which is which has been a wild ride because there's really no parenting books, right, to help us, guide us. Um, there's no manual or maybe not an official one. So um, so it's been great. Um, I went through a the pandemic with them working from home and them <laughs> doing distance learning from home, and I didn't kill a child, so... I call that a success. <laughs> I, would, I would call that a success as well. <laughs> but no, you're 100 right. Um, I, I, I used to travel. Uh, I was on the road uh, three to five thousand miles a month, um, and then I went from literally just one day doing that to being at home 24 hours a day, and then the kids also be what a monster transition. Um, uh, but I'm actually kind of thankful for it. I don't know about you, but I, I, for me, it was a little bit of a silver lining because, you know, it, it it forced me to slow down in a way that I don't think I would have naturally done it myself. 
Um, and and, and it kind of gave me that time to to kind of reflect a bit more on maybe some of the parenting strategies that I was kind of executing at the time. Um, and, and, and I think it's a perfect segue into our first topic today, which is, you know, work-life balance, the, the infamous work-life balance, you know, like, I, I feel like it's like this magical unicorn that just is kind of out there. And like, as parents, we're supposed to try to like, seek it out and find it, you know, and it's like, does it really exist? But I'd love to get your thoughts, Michelle. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, uh, maybe I'll, I'll go back to what you're saying about the pandemic, um, because that was definitely interesting time. I used to, um, and still do now that the world is a little bit, uh, I don't know if normal is the right thing to say, but, um, <laughs> my daughter has always had a hard time when I travel. Um, and this goes back to probably since she was like five years old. Um, and it still persists today now that I'm traveling again, but, um, prior to the pandemic, she would, um, you know, have a really hard time, like follow me to the door, be really upset and emotional that I was leaving, um, make it very, very difficult to go. And when the pandemic hit and we all got grounded, it was like her dream came true. (laughs) I was all of a sudden home all the time, all that travel stopped. So it was, it was definitely an interesting time. And, um, you know, we can, we can talk about that a little bit more because I think we also want to talk about the travel aspect, but, um, From a work-life balance perspective, I've always found that, um, first of all, and I don't know if you're like me at all, Jason, but I I could just work to death. Yes, I just enjoy it so much. If it was just me, I could literally just keep going. I don't know where that comes from. It's part of my ethos. So I have to be very specific, and I've always had to do this, about where my ground rules are. So, for instance, when my kids were very, very little, and they were in um, preschool, I made a commitment, even though I had a two hour commute (laughs) at the time, (laughs) obviously now I'm I'm working from home, but at the time I had a two hour commute. And I always said, I will have a presence at their school. Mm. I will not be that parent that the school doesn't know. And so it was always with intention. I would leave work at four o'clock, drive the hour and a half home, it was two hours there, hour and a half home to make sure I was the one, even though my husband, worked like five minutes from the house. Um, but I was the one that had some kind of presence on most days, picking them up from school. So it's, it's, I think really about making that intentional yes. time, you know, or just like you might work all the way up to making dinner and spending time with them. And you may work after they go to bed <laughs> at that time in between that you have at night is super important and super valuable as a family. So just, pocketing that and saying like, I'm, I'm offline. It used to be the big joke uh, back in the day when I was at Edmonds, because that's where I was driving to for a couple of hours every day. Um, and it was the joke that my team had, like, if you need to get a hold of Michelle, ping her at about nine, because she'll be back online at that point. But, but I thought it was really important that I did that, um, set that time aside for the kids and to be just a hundred percent present with them. So I, I think it's about being intentional because if we're not intentional, yes. those of us that, you know, have these um, uh, big careers and, and aspirations would just, like I said, we, we would just work ourselves to death. Well, we, we would. I mean, you know, I've, I've, and I love that you bring up, you know, kind of working a lot, right? Because you know, I, I find a lot of times, you know, in, in our industry that we, we kind of hide from kind of admitting that. So, you know, but, but I'm with you. I, I do. I work a lot. If 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 I don't have if I don't have like a stop button or a stopwatch that's telling me it's time to slow down, I I, I probably just I wouldn't. And and but but I th- also think it's in I think it's important that we do that because I actually think it, it says a lot to our kids. I've this is the way I've explained uh, my approach to work to my kids is I explain it to them in the sense of a marathon, and and I tell them I say, look guys, you, you see your dad, he will never run a marathon. All right. But he knows a lot of people that have run a marathon. Um, (laughs) And and from my understanding, the success to running a marathon is finding a pace that you're comfortable maintaining all the time. And, you know, as you guys grow up and you guys are going to get older, you're going to find that your pace, you know, because they run, you know, so like, you know, I have two boys, my two youngest, seven and nine. Right. And what does my seven year want to do? He always wants to keep up with the nine year old James. 
And it's yeah. just, he is so frustrated because he's just a little bit shorter. His legs just aren't as long. He just can't keep up with them. I mean, and I explained to him, I said, as you get older, your pace is going to get bigger. It's going to get stronger. You're going to find a place that you're comfortable just always maintaining. And, and, th and, that's, and that's for me, that's just kind of what work is. I find a pace I'm just always able to maintain. But I love the fact that you're bringing up the balance around intentionality. Because I think that is, you know, I, I think there's like this proverbial, you know, concept when it comes to balance that there's like this, this scale. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm going to spend 57.3 hours in my work this week, then I'm going to have to compensate by spending X amount of hours in. And that's not necessarily, but I, I feel like that is kind of the pressure that as parents were given, like, well, if, well, if you can do that for your work, why can't you do that for, you know, for, uh, for home? Um, but no, you're, you're right. It, it, it's being intentional with our time, but then creating that routine around the intentionality, I think says right. a lot about it. Um, let, let's go down that rabbit hole routine, because I think that if I'm going to try to strive to balance work and life, I think routine is key. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree. I think um, it's important that we are thinking about you know, what, what is it that we want to give every day? What, what time is it that we're dedicating to that? So for, for my family, that is all around dinner and um, the walk after dinner. Right? And just, and now it's like, it went from, Oh, you know, it's so nice to be with the family. Like we're not dragging the teenagers out, but it's important that we have that time to, to talk and have those routines. Like we have a question we ask every night at dinner, which is what was your favorite part of the day? Um, and the expectation is, even though we have teenagers now, that the answer isn't like nothing. Um, <laughs> it's not acceptable, but that's something that we've asked every day for their entire lives. And so what I think has happened is not only does that bring up and you know, that, that sharing of those moments of what went right, what went wrong, during our days, um, but it's also made them just be more open generally with other people. I see my kids have that same kind of interaction with their their friends, with people they know in, in their lives. Um, so, you know, having those things where you're like, okay, you know, when they were younger, it was like, we read a book every night. <laughs> uh, as they've gotten to teenagers, we take a walk every night. And it's just, it's important to have that time um, for them that's separate from the routine that we have for work because there's, you know, it's, it's life is busy in the morning. It's like, oh, yes. okay, everybody makes lunches. Everybody gets out the door, go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so you have to have the, that space and that time that you're dedicated to your kids um, and a routine around that, that they come to predict and, and find valuable in their own lives. And I'm always thinking, what is it that they're going to remember? I think that's, that's what yes. drives me a little bit. It's like, I'm always trying to be in the future with them of like, when they look back on their childhood, what, what are those moments? Is it the big trips or is it the small day-to-day -day stuff that they're going to remember? Um, and I, you know, it's probably a little bit of both, but I think building mm -hmm. those things where they're like, I remember when I was little, you know, my mom and dad always read to me every night, like those types of things are the, the routines and the moments that they will find precious and hopefully pass on to their, their kids. So it, it you know, and it says a lot, I think for, I think it supports a lot when it comes to their development. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking a little bit about this before we started recording today, how I kind of find kids kind of go through these seasons of training and development and coaching. And, you know, it's it, that is a, a key point to to you know, we can train on what here's the activities you need to achieve to get up in the morning and get out to school. All right. But then but let's let's develop out that routine so we kind of understand not necessarily just what we're doing, but why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. You know, and I, I think it says a lot when when kids start embracing the concept of routine at a young age, I think it fundamentally supports their ongoing develop and their future coaching efforts in, in, in a big way. Look, I, I know adults that still struggle today to really embrace a routine. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm, I'm hundred percent with you, which I think this is kind of a perfect segue into kind of our next topic around inspiring our, inspiring your kids. Uh, no, it's funny when I, when you sent over this topic, I was like, I'll tell you what the first thing went through my mind is, is I, well, I, I think I just got done uh, going to a hockey game, and um, I don't know. Well, in the states, maybe it's the equivalent of football parents, but in Canada, we have hockey parents, who are a whole nother level. 
Oh no, attempting. you mean soccer parents? Oh, so- okay, sorry, soccer, <laughs> soccer parents. Soccer sorry, parents. <laughs> like just to clarify. No, okay, that so was, so it's that soccer. That's a crazy parents. soccer parent. Yes, yes. Wow, and I'm just like I see them on the sidelines, and I understand what they're attempting to do. They're attempting to inspire their kids to do better, but I'm just going. Holy crap, man. I've seen- it's not inspiring, by the way. When well, you're yelling at somebody, um, my, my husband at one point, I think, saw somebody doing that and went up to the person and said, can you do what your child's doing right now? Go do it. Oh, Go, try. Because, like, it, you know, it's, I, yeah. Anyways, but yes, um, I hear what you're saying about um, inspiring and, like, what does that look like? For me, it's, like, how I show up. Um Mm, and oh, yeah. like I said, I'm always thinking about where are they going to um, seek, you know, uh, guidance or, you know, how are they going to act themselves as an adult and what are the, who are they going to be? Um, and I think for me, it's, you know, no matter what the situation, no matter how much my, you know, kids complain about something, it's like, who am I being as a role model for them that they can look up to? And when I have those moments to point things out, uh, I do. Like I've been very clear with both my my son and daughter that it is actually rare um, as as a female to be in the role that their mother has as an executive at a company. Mm-hmm. And, and I do that with intention so that my daughter knows that that is an opportunity for her. And I do with intention so my my son lives that life and doesn't think any differently of it yes. <laughs> when he gets into the to the corporate world if he chooses that. Um, So I'm always thinking about, okay, yes, I know, you know, they're complaining that I'm traveling or um, that I work a lot or whatever their complaints are. But this is what is going to, at the end of the day, they're going to reflect back and say, look at what my mom accomplished. Look at, you know, I've seen her speak. I've I've seen her, you know, um, give these big talks to her team. And I've heard how her team talk about her, like, these are the things that I, I think about as they become ready to enter their careers. I want them to be inspired by, like um, uh, as an example, when I told my daughter that I was writing a book, she was like so excited. She actually wanted to sit down and write a book alongside me and, um, super, super sweet. We'll see if we ever get that one finished. But, um, just that thought of like, she's so proud that she's a good writer because she puts that in contrast to her mother, who she thinks is a really good writer. Um, and so how can we show up from our a career perspective and inspire them to be whatever it is they want to be, uh, I think is, is super powerful and super meaningful. Um, I talked to this woman, I guess it was a couple months ago, um, because I was, you know, talking about I'm, I'm back in, into traveling. My daughter's upset again. Like she said, um, you'll get to a point where your daughter will be old enough to thank you for everything that you did. Um, oh, one back of these then. Days, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was amazing to hear that. She said, in fact, my daughter just graduated college. And as part of her, one of her essays to get into college, she had to to write something really meaningful. And she wrote about what my work meant to her. And I was like, you know, of course at that point I'm like in tears thinking about like, could this ever actually happen? Um, I can't see it right now in the, in the forest. Right. Um, uh, that is my life. But like that, that keeps motivating me to say at some point they will look at what I have done and what I've accomplished and and who I am and, and where I focus my time and be inspired by that for their own lives and their own careers. And, and part of that is how much they know I love what I do. You know, I grew up with a father yes. who didn't always love what he did. And that showed up for me too. And that wasn't very inspiring, right? So love what you do, be good at it. Um, and and try to really do the best you can are some of the, the basics of what I'm trying to instill in them when they see me work. And, and you know what, now more than ever, because I work from home, um, they see it. They see it all the time. Oh, absolutely. They saw it during the pandemic. They see it when they come home from school at three o'clock. Like they see it all the time. So I have to keep that in my head that that's continuing to make an impact on them. Well, it's it's inspiring through involvement. And um, I got to be honest with you, this was something that I wasn't uh, really good at, at at all. It just wasn't something that was natural for me. And and to your point, kind of talking about our parents, because I wasn't necessarily role modeled, I think, for our generation in, in many ways. I mean, I, I, I think of my parents and when anything of work-life balance, it was definitely, there was, there was work 
and then there was home and mm. full separation. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I, as, as, as a kid, I probably couldn't even tell you what my father did for a living. I, I, I know he worked for this small company called Intel. Um, and I know it had <laughs> something to do with computers, but you know, you know, I, it just, there, there wasn't, there, there wasn't necessarily this connection of like, I don't know what he, and, 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 and for many years, even as a, probably a young adult, I still probably never had any idea what the heck he actually did, um, you know, for, for that small company, which is not a small company anymore. It was when he started. It was when he started. Um, but, but you're right though. I mean, I get my kids involved in kind of my business and my success. You know, it's like, you know, they, they, they know that I was doing a bot podcast you know, today. And they asked me about, well, who is it with? And what are you going to be talking about? And, and, and stuff like that. And I, I can't ever imagine, you know, as a kid growing up, I would have had that conversation with my father. Oh, you're having a meeting today? Oh, who's, who's, who's that meeting with? And what are you guys <laughs> going to be talking about today? You know, but, but I think it's through involvement. Um, it's just super key. One of the things I, 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 I've been trying to be more cautious about is celebrating my wins. I don't know about you, but I'm actually really bad about celebrating wins. And, you know, with my, my, my team, uh, you know, on the agency side, and even with Matador, I'm, it's not my first gut reaction, you know, when we close another deal, or we create a new contract to, to go ring the bell and make a bunch of noise about it. I just, I'm, I'm just like, okay, let's, let's move into the next one. Let's move into the next one. And so I've been trying to be a little more, you know, cautious about celebrating those wins. And I've been trying to be a little more cautious about celebrating them with the kids. You know, mm. and I'm like, hey, guys, so we're going to go out and get tacos tonight because we're going to celebrate. Dad just closed a big contract. And like, oh, you did? You know, and I think just that through that involvement, like you were saying, I think can definitely inspire kids, you know, to to embrace and em, em, embrace some of the challenges and strive, you know, for some of those wins. But I'd love to get your thoughts. Yeah, it's interesting. I was thinking as you were talking about celebrating wins. Um, I used to be really bad at it at work. Um, and at some point in my career, I realized just how important it is to show up for your team um, and celebrate their wins and celebrate your wins um, and be a little bit more open about that. But honestly, what was coming up for me as you were talking is I don't know that I properly celebrate them with my kids. Um they see, they see them, they, mm -hmm. they have exposure maybe through osmosis, maybe <laughs> um, as they're listening to me on calls like this. Um, but I don't know that I intentionally go out and be like, you know, I was so excited that we finished this um, project today and, you know, we were able to really make an impact on the industry and let's go to dinner. <laughs> like I've yeah. not connected those two things. So I actually learned something from you, Jason, which is, Maybe that's an area for improvement and to think a little bit more about how that shows up. You know, we talk about our days at dinner, but like as far as like celebrating wins, I have to, I'm going to have to incorporate that. It's a good idea. Well, I mean, I think it, well, good parenting is just a series of hacks, right? I mean, we oh, really think about totally. it. I mean, it's just a series of just kind of hacking our way through it, you know. And and the cool thing of, of sorry, celebrating some of my wins, they now want to celebrate some of their wins. You know, so and 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 I, and I love it because you know it's it, it's it's respecting the fact that, the, that there was some hard work work put in place. You know, my um, I was very fortunate this last year for both my daughter and my oldest son to be on the same hockey team. Um, that will probably never ever happen again. It just happened to be this certain age group, and just they were yeah. overfilled with another age group, and they got put into the same one, and they they. They went all the way through finals and and won the tournament. And, you know, they instantly, they wanted to celebrate it. You know, I mean, we're it's not, they're not going to go to Disneyland or something, but they wanted to, you know, they're like, can we go? Uh, we have this diner next to our house that has like these, they, these, they're called mega milkshakes. And they're like, they're like a foot and a half tall and they got sparklers coming out of them and donuts oh, yeah. and all this stuff. And, that's what they wanted it to do. They wanted to go celebrate it, but I think celebration is a great thing. Yeah. But like again, it's all a series of hacks, which I think is the perfect segue into our next topic, which is tips and tricks uh, for traveling. And boy, would I love to get your thoughts on this. I just did a 16 hour drive with three kids and a dog um, from Toronto to where I now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I probably could have used a couple tips and tricks when I was <laughs> traveling. I, I didn't know if maybe you meant traveling with kids or just traveling yourself, but let's, 
However, yeah, you meant that. Yeah, it's interesting. I can add that in. I okay, was thinking about <laughs> being away from home and like staying connected. Well, let's but start there. Let's start there. That, we'll do that. that. That's a whole other topic, which is how to travel with kids. <laughs> um, but uh, for like, um, you know, what what do you do? Especially, like I said, I, I have a daughter who's always been super attached and had a hard time. And um, what we started to do to get her past that is that she would go into her room before I left and she'd go pick out like one of her favorite stuffed animals that could fit my suitcase. And, um, and she would say, bring it with you. And so I would bring this little stuffed animal with me. And then every day that I was on my work trip, I would go put said stuffed animal in a random location, take a picture and then send it to her. Um, and so that, that connection, even if I was busy, even if the, the time zones were different and we weren't going to be able to connect on, um, you know, FaceTime or anything like that, there was always that connection point, um, where she felt that I was there. And that was what I'm constantly trying to recreate, uh, with my family is even when I'm traveling, I'm still with you, right? So here's your stuffed animal. Here's the picture, you know, um, we have other routines. Like every time I get on the plane, I, I send a bunch of emojis to both of my kids. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for my daughter, it's all like roses and animals and kisses. And for a very long time, I would just send my son a little poop emoji because he's got my my husband's <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> so I think all uh, little and, boys and then, find and then the heart later. Uh, but uh, those little things, those little moments keep us connected even when I'm, you know, out of town. I, I think that that's important when you're traveling, that you take that time, even if you can't have a phone call to connect with your family. Um, my husband often will take like video or pictures of where he is when he's traveling um, and share that with the kids so that they can kind of see his room or see the location or the city or the town. Um, so th those are some tips and tricks I've found, but the, I love it. the one in particular with the stuffed animal has been something that I've really treasured with my daughter. And I'll probably remember forever, um, packing up those stuffed animals and taking them on trips. <laughs> um, so there's that as far as like trip trips, you know, that you're taking with your family. I, I tend to look at those as just like survival mode, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> like, you know, cause we also have two kids and a dog and we take a lot of road trips. Um, we go up to mammoth here in California. Um, we've gone to Arizona cause we have family there and these are like pretty long drives, um, with a lot of people in the car. And so I've found um, separation of the kids to be good. Like if you can create some kind of like barrier between them so that there's no like, you know, her foot is on my side of the car or whatever, like, and then lots of charging stations, like make sure you're, you've got every charging station that you possibly can plugged into your car so that they're, you know, just the limit, the, what I would call like the agita, right. The, the agitation that's happening in your vehicle, uh, while you're driving, those, those are like some like just quick nuggets that I've found is super helpful. Um, the dog adds a whole new element if he's, you know, free and roaming. But, um, you know, I think also there's some trips that we've taken that, yeah, all that chaos happened, but they're the most memorable trips. You know, we, we took during a, a week of early in the pandemic, we said, you know what, we'll never have another time where the kids could do school from anywhere. Yes. So we got in our motorhome and we drove for a week <laughs> and went and saw like the Grand Canyon and Mount Rushmore and Custard's Park. And we just, you know, kind of really drove around to different states. And yeah, all that fighting and he's touching me and all that stuff happened. <laughs> but it's one of the most memorable trips we've ever taken. And so you, you often have to just look at, OK, yes, there is chaos and traveling with your family. Um, um, but it's the moments and the memory that really afterwards you're going to think fondly of. No, you, you're 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 hundred percent right. Um, there there are those the moments, uh, maybe not in the moment, uh, maybe a few weeks after. Oh, that was that 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 was cute. That was fun, and yeah, that was cute and fun. But do you remember what happened? Like literally, like fifteen minutes before that, when you know, <laughs> you know the the youngest had just puked all over the floor, and you know, and she just. <laughs> 
it's real. <laughs> it's a real thing. But um, but no, going back to uh, traveling, I'm actually 100% with you. In fact, actually, I was going to see if I could try to find one and see if I can do this. But um, I did the this a very, very similar thing um, with Lego guys. So oh, yeah. Lego guys were something that I could keep in my pocket and I would take them to conferences with me. And and I take pictures yes. of these Lego guys and send it and send it back, you know, to my youngest. That's how I connect with my youngest. Uh, my oldest always wanted to see what I was eating. I don't know why. Mm. Uh, she was just very fascinated. She's, just, she's always been a foodie, you know. I mean, from a you know, it's 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 actually kind of a. It's hard now when we go to restaurants. She goes, mm, I'm going to start off with a shrimp cocktail, and can I get half a dozen oysters? And that like, sounds expensive. <laughs> So, you know, but well, my, da- my daughter is very into seeing my, my hotel room and fancy hotel rooms, which yes. is also scary for the future because she might be like, I have to go stay at the Ritz. Like, this is what I'm familiar with. Like, who knows? <laughs> but, but no, it's involvement, right? And that's kind of what we were kind of talking about earlier, even just with inspiring kids is just that, that, that involvement. Um, but, but finding a way that you can involve them and consistently execute. That was one of the things I always found, right? So right. it's like, you know, the hotel room is a perfect one because you know the second you go in, you just take the photo, you send it. Um, you know, before the chaos of those conferences or those events or whatever the travel right. is, you know, there are definitely times I, I wasn't able to call them throughout the event because eight hours of talking all day and then dinners afterwards and then cocktails after that. And it was just, you know, but the, yeah, you're right. It was just finding some consistent way to maintain connection and I think that's huge, you know, when you're traveling. And of course, I, I, uh, traveling with kids, like I said, I just did a 16 hour road trip. Oh, you're going to love this. Uh, uh, two hours into it, the DVD player breaks. Oh, yeah, and, that would like, be and it's like there's a disc stuck inside the tr- in my car and I can't get the disc out. I'm just going, uh, podcast. I actually found something because I was thinking, like, what do I do when I'm on the road? Right. And I like to listen to podcasts when I'm on the road. So I'm like, I'm wondering, hmm, there's got to be kids podcast, right? And sure enough, there's a lot of kids podcasts. And I found some cool, like, uh, a storytellers. And they were telling stories about knights and magicians and kings and princesses and just all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, so we, we pretty much listen to podcasts for 13 hours. Um, <laughs> but- That's good, though, because it's not, um, it's not stimulating them visually, which is always part of the challenge with them, the screen time, right? Yeah, because so you had to kind of picture it in your just head. Have them listen, that's, a, that's like a skill that most kids that age don't have, which is to sit down and yes. just listen. So I like it. <laughs> yeah, I actually, you know, it's so funny. I'm actually, I, I like it so much that we're just, um, I'm, I'm ordering a new a new family vehicle and uh, we were going through the list of options. It was like DVD player. I'm like, actually, you know what? No. I don't think we should do that anymore. I think, you know, and it was, it was kind of, it was fun listening to the stories because it was fun when we stopped, we talk about the stories, who was your favorite character and stuff like that. But, but look, if you're traveling with or without kids, it's just a series of hacks and it's just, how do we, how do we hack and maintain uh, that consistency and that attention? Mm -hmm. Uh, Look, Michelle, I know we're getting towards the tail end of our conversation today, but I would love to kind of end our conversation with just one more question, if I can slip it in there Uh, for any, um, let's say new and upcoming parents that are out there right now, all right? What advice would you share with any upcoming or new parents when it comes to the business of parenting? Mm, <laughs> I know it's tough here, right? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I'm such a realist in case people didn't get that from this. Um, you know, I know so many people where they look at, at parenting or they, they talk to people and they're like, Oh my God, it's the most amazing, like, you know, thing that you've ever experienced in your life. And it's such a blessing and it's so amazing. I'm like, it is all of those things. But the one thing that people don't tell you is that like 99.9% of the time it's hard. Um, and it may suck. (laughs) And, and what's hard for people to get until you are a parent is that 0.1% of the time is amazing. And somehow there's some weird chemistry that does wipe out the rest of it when those moments happen. And so I guess my advice would be to really, you know, be present in those moments and capture them and and hold on to them 
even in the, the, the chaos of everything else that's happening around you. And I think, you know, that's true at work too, which is being present, you know, putting everything down and making sure you're making eye contact and really listening and having the other person feel heard is such an important skill. Uh, it's an important skill to teach your kids. It's an important skill to give um, back to your uh, employees and your customers. And so I think even just at that early age of just, being present as much as you can, especially in those moments that you kind of want to like, you know, take a, a picture of like in that moment, <laughs> because the rest of the world is chaotic. So I think that would be it, which would be just be be present. Um, I think it's a, a great skill and, and maybe one that's not used as often as it should be. I, I, I think that's awesome. Uh, it's definitely one that I need to personally work on, you know, especially amongst the chaos of it. It's like, you almost just kind of like, let's just, I just want to get out of this. I just want it to be over, please. You know, but yeah, no, it's a mindset to, uh, to, to, to attempt to be present, even when chaos is surrounding you. Um, and, uh, no, I like that. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing tip and definitely one that I need to work on as, as well. Hey, for, uh, Michelle, for everyone out there that's watching and listening right now, would maybe love to connect with you and follow along with your journey, maybe learn a little bit more about the upcoming book. What's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. It's just Michelle Denogene, all all one word. Um, oh yes, it's on the screen. Good because I know people can't pronounce it or spell it correctly. <laughs> um, or um, you can also email me at Michelle Denogene at gmail dot com. So either of those um, to connect personally, and then I'm Michelle at side dot com at uh, at my new company that I'm part of. So. That's awesome. Hey, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me today. This has been a lot of fun. You have yourself an amazing day. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to the Business of Parenting podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.